this is an announcer. Or... Assalamu alaikum wa Brothers and sisters in Islam, as the month of Ramadan comes to a close, it is important for us to look at how we end this blessing. The Prophet he said in the authentic hadith, Al-A'mal bil khawatim. Wa fi riwayatin qala, innam al-A'mal bil khawatim. That actions, the reward of the action is dependent upon how it is ended. The reward of the action is dependent upon how you end it. Meaning how you end the deed will determine whether or not it was accepted 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of you. We spend a lot of times, we spend a lot of time focusing on the quantity of our deeds between abundance and sparsity or an inadequacy and we lose sight of the importance of the quality of the deed and the consistency of the deed. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu a'malin ahabu ilallah, O Messenger of Allah, which deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying, Adwamuha wa in qalla, those deeds that are done consistently, even though they are small, they are few, you do them consistently. Meaning that you don't just do them in Ramadan and then when Ramadan is over, you stop. You continue on with these deeds after Ramadan is over as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves consistency. I even Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kunu li kabul al amal ashaddu intimamin minkum bil amal. Alam tasma'u kawla Allah ta'ala inna ma yatakabbal Allah min al muttaqeen. I even Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, be more attentive to the acceptance of your deeds just as you are attentive to doing the deed at all. Be just as attentive with the fact of whether or not your deed was accepted just as you are with doing the deed. Didn't you hear the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah only accepts from the pious. That should make every single one of us question whether or not anything that we've done or anything that we do is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah says that He only accepts from the pious, then that means that just doing the deed is not, should not just be our focus, but whether or not we are from amongst the righteous whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept those deeds from. And another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, rajim وَالَّذِينَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلًا أَنَّهُمْ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And those who do their deeds, وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلًا While their hearts are trembling with fear, that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't even accept it from them. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she didn't understand. So she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Ahumul ladheena yashrabun al-khamar wa yasrakun? Are these the people who drink alcohol and steal and do major sins in addition to doing their deeds? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La ya bintu siddiq, wa lakinna humul ladheena yasumun wa yusallun wa yatasaddaqun wa hum yakhafun an la yuqbal minkum. The Prophet ﷺ said, No, O daughter of Siddiq, daughter of Abu Bakr. He said, Rather, these are the people who fast, pray, give sadaqah, yet they are in fear that none of it is accepted from them. We just spent roughly 20 something days at the end of Ramadan, it'll be 29 to 30 days fasting, reading Quran, making dhikr, making salat, giving sadaqah feeding the homeless, feeding the needy, being nice and gentle with one another. And we go out of the month of Ramadan believing that all of that was accepted from us. Not one inkling of fear that perhaps everything that I did is unacceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because perhaps I was missing the condition. Perhaps I was missing something. Perhaps I wasn't sincere enough. Perhaps I needed to do more. We leave out of the month of Ramadan as if we know, guaranteed, that everything that we've done was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there were men and women that were greater than us, that exerted themselves far more than we have, and were in more fear than we have ever had, as it relates to whether or not their deeds will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, we don't have that fear. Month of Ramadan is over, we say, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, Allah, may Allah accept from us, Alhamdulillah, wa mashin had. And we keep it moving. No fear. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلًا Those who do good deeds, but their hearts are in fear that none of it is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we watch with a heavy heart as the last hours of this blessed month go by, almost like minutes, 
It is imperative that we pay attention to how we end this month. And the best way to end the month of Ramadan, just as it is with ending any good deed, is to end it with seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. al istighfar The scholars, they say that the reason that seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness is the best way to end any deed is because it reminds us, it serves, number one, as a reparation for any deficiency or any error or any shortcoming that we may have been guilty of while we were fasting. In addition, it is a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing that we actually didn't even deserve it. He gave it to us purely out of his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was also the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to end his righteous deeds with seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness as this is something that is mentioned all throughout the Qur'an which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions put into practical application. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Hajj. He said, And then go down to Muzdalifa, where the rest of the pilgrims are going after they leave the mountain of Arafah. When they leave Arafah, they head to Mina to spend the uh, to Muzdalifa to spend the night in Muzdalifa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when you're done on Arafah, head towards Muzdalifa with the rest of the people. Wastafirullah and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because after you complete standing on Arafah, your hajj is pretty much done. The Prophet said, Al Hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. The essence of Hajj is Arafah. Meaning, once you complete your Arafah, your Hajj is basically done. The rest of it is just formalities. But the bulk of your Ibadah is pretty much done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended it with seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, for indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in an authentic hadith, مَن تَوَضَّعَ فَأَحْسَنَ الْوُضُوءُ ثُمَّ قَالَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شِرِكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنِي مِنَ التَّوَّابِينَ وَجَعَلْنِي مِنَ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ فُتِحَتْ لَهُ ثَمَانِيَةَ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ يَدْخُلُ مِنْ أَيِّهَا الشَّعْبَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, anyone who makes wudu, perfects his wudu, but ahsan al wudu, he perfects his wudu. Not just go and do, you know, the parts of the body that he believes he's supposed to. No, take your time. Perfect your wudu. And then after you finish making wudu, you make this dua. I bear witness that nothing deserves worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Oh Allah, make me from amongst the tawwabin, those who turn to you in sincere repentance and asking for forgiveness. And make me from amongst those who purify themselves. No one makes this dua after making wudu except all of the eight gates of Jannah will open for him in that moment and he will enter through the, any of the eight gates he decides. Any of the eight gates he wishes. But this is saying astaghfirullah or asking Allah to make you from amongst the tawwabin even after you finish making wudu. And another narration, the Prophet sallallahu said, من جلس في مجلس فكثر فيه يبلغن يعني الغيبة والنميمة فقال قبلي قبل أن يقوم من مجلسه ذلك سبحانك اللهم رب سبحانك اللهم ربنا وبحمدك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك إلا غفر له إلا غفر له ما كان في مجلسه ذلك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said no one sits in a gathering and within that gathering there has been a lot of backbiting, a lot of talking unnecessarily, a lot of frivolous talk, a lot of love. In that majlis, in that gathering. Except that before he gets up and leaves out of that gathering, he says, Subhanakallahumma, glory be to Allah, O oh Allah, wa bihamdik, and praises be to you. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, I bear witness that nothing deserves worship except you. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. 
Astaghfiruk ya wa atubu ilayk. I seek your forgiveness and I turn to you in repentance. Accept that you will be forgiven for everything that transpired in that conversation before you walk away. This is in the conversation, a group of gathering. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another ayah, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بالصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس That there is no good in most of our private discourses, our private conversations, except if it involves encouraging people to give sadaqa or enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil. Our islah and bayn al-nas or figuring out a way to bring reconciliation between people. If your gatherings and your conversations don't involve those things, then your conversations are usually going to teeter on what is haram from backbiting and tail carrying and gossiping and slandering. And so when we find ourselves in gatherings, before you get up, make this dua. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Except that you will be forgiven for everything that transpired in that conversation before you walk away. These are just some examples of deeds that the Prophet ﷺ completed using istighfar. He completed these deeds, and the best way to end your deed is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ was such an embodiment of this concept that his entire life ended upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while seeking his forgiveness down to his very last breaths. It was mentioned in Sahih Bukhari on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأسغبت إليه قبل أن يموت وهو مسند إلي إلي ظهره ويقول اللهم اغفر لي ورحمني وألحقني بالرفيق الأعلى وهذه آخر كلمات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل أن مات لا إله إلا الله عائشة she said that I was with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as he was taking his last breaths and I could hear him mumbling something under his breath. His back was laying on my chest. So she's sitting down, the Prophet ﷺ is laying up against her chest, with his back against her chest and her arms around him. So she leans forward to try to hear what his last words were. And she said, what I heard him saying was, Allahumma ghfirli, oh Allah forgive me, warhamni and have mercy upon me. وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالْرَفِيقِ الْأَعْلَى And join me amongst the highest companionship, meaning take me to you. Those were his last words. He ended his life, not just his deeds with seeking Allah's forgiveness. He ended his life with seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. A true embodiment of the best way to end your deeds, the best way to end your life, is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. When death came to one of the Sahaba, Al-Ala ibn Yazid, لما احتضر Al-Ala ibn Yazid, الموت, بكى بكاء شديدا, فقيل له ما يبكيك, قال قلت والله لا أحب أن أستقبل الموت بالتوبة. قالوا فافعل رحمك الله. فدعا بطهور يعني وضوء فتطهر ثم دعا بثوب جديد فلبسه ثم استقبل القبلة فأومأ برأسه مرتين أو نحو ذلك ثم اتجع ومات One of the companions, Ala bin Yazid, he was on his deathbed, last moments before the angel of death came to collect his soul. And he turns to some of his companions who are around him and he said, he's crying. And they asked him, what is making you cry? Why are you crying? And he said, because I wanted my last moments to be me seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And they said, well, what's stopping you? Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Make tawbah. And so he called for a bucket of water and he performed wudu. He called for a tawbah, a garment to put on. And he got up to face the qibla. And as he motioned with his head a few times, he fell back in the loss of Anwatab and took his soul in that moment that his last deed was attempting to seek a loss of Anwatab's forgiveness. They were an embodiment of this. Not only did they end their deeds with seeking a loss of Anwatab's forgiveness, they ended their life with seeking a loss of Anwatab's forgiveness. Another companion of the Prophet, Amr bin al As, he said on his deathbed, Allahumma. 
أمرتني أمرتنا فعصيناك ونهيتنا فركبنا ولا يزعنا إلا عفوك لا إله إلا أنت ثم رددها مرارا حتى مات عمر بن العاص one of the great companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on his deathbed he said oh Allah you commanded us to do things but we still disobeyed you you commanded us to do things yet we still disobeyed you you prohibited us from doing certain things yet we still did them anyway oh Allah there is nothing that can be more beneficial for us in this moment except your forgiveness oh Allah forgive me La ilaha illa ant, nothing deserving of worship except you. Oh Allah, forgive me, nothing deserves worship except you. Oh Allah, forgive me, nothing deserves worship except you. And he died in that moment. His life ended upon seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Al-a'mal bil khawateen. Actions are dependent upon how you ended them. Your life is based upon how you end it. So seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness is the best way to end any act of worship, including the best way to end our lives, as our lives, much like any act of worship, is riddled with all types of mistakes and errors and shortcomings. Our lives, much like our deeds, are riddled with errors, mistakes, shortcomings. So should, we should always be you know, diligent in seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tuba liman wajada fi sa'ifatihi istighfar kathira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tuba. Some scholars say Tuba is a shajara in Jannah. It's a certain tree that is in Jannah. Some scholars say it means Jannah. Tuba, Jannah, is for the individual who looks into his record of deeds, Yom al Qiyamah, and he sees in every single sentence of his deeds, istighfar. Astaghfirullah. All throughout his record, all he sees is Astaghfirullah here, Astaghfirullah there. He did this, Astaghfirullah. He did that, Astaghfirullah. All throughout his record, all he sees is him seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Tuba liman wajda fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Success, paradise for the one who stands before Allah Yom al Qiyamah when he has shown his record and in every line of his record there is a statement of Astaghfirullah where he was seeking or she was seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Allahumma ja'al khayra a'malana khawatimah. Oh Allah, make the best of our deeds, the last of our deeds. Wa khayra a'malana awakhiraha. And the best of our years, the last of our years. And the best of our days, the day that we meet you, Ya Dal Jalali wal Ikram. Allahumma fir lana ma mada wa aslih lana ma taqa. Oh Allah, forgive us for everything that has taken taken place in the past and rectify for us everything that will come to us in our future. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Awwim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima ja'a fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim akunu ma tasma'un astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-mu'minin min kulli dham fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim wa ta'ibu min al-dham kamin la dhambala الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لا إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سراجا منيرا أما بعد As Ramadan comes to a close brothers and sisters it is important that we take inventory of the progress that we've made individually with regards to our practice of Islam and the relationship that we have built with certain acts of worship that we have grown intimately close with. We have to find a way to maintain our relationship with these acts of worship so as to avoid abandoning them, abandoning them considering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves consistency. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves consistency and He hates inconsistency. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ إِنْ كَاثًا And do not be like the woman who spun her yarn very tight and then unraveled it. 
What we were doing in Ramadan was building, strengthening our yarn tight, getting up for suhoor and therefore praying Salatul Fajr, coming to the masjid and praying in Jama'ah, sitting in lectures and learning more about our religion, concentrating on our character and learning how to taper down our, our anger and our frustration with people around us, learning how to be more generous, learn how to be more giving and more selfless, all of these things that we begin working on in Ramadan. How do you maintain that? Or do you just give it all up after Ramadan is over? Don't be like the woman who spun her yarn tight and then unraveled it afterwards. This is what is called self-sabotaging behavior. That you would build yourself up so strong and then as soon as the heat is over, you let yourself go. What was it all worth? The Prophet وسلم, he said to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, Ya Abdullah, inni wallahi uhibbuka fillah, walakin la takun mithlu fulan, kana yakumu layl thumma tarakaha. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Abdullah, I love you, wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah, but do not be like so-and-so who used to get up at night and pray, and then he stopped. Don't be like that. If you get up at night and pray, then make that a regular practice that you take with you to your grave. Find something that is easy for you to do and stick with it. But don't build yourself up in Ramadan and then soon as the eid is over, you give up and you give in to your desires. You give in to the whispers of shaitan. You give in to the negative influences. Then what was Ramadan all about? So inshallah ta'ala, for the next few moments that I have with you in the khutbah, I'm going to give you a few things that we can use, tools that we can use to maintain consistency after Ramadan is over. Number one, the greatest way to maintain consistency after Ramadan is over is to hate who you were before Ramadan. Hate to go back to the individual that you were before Ramadan. Hate to go back to the person who only prayed one time a day, or one time a week, or only came to Jumu'ah once a month. Hate to return back to the person that was backbiting and slandering and gossiping about people. Hate to return back to the person that didn't fast last year, but you made an effort to do it this year. Hate to return to the person that you were. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَلَافٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ بِهِنَّ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ There are three qualities. Whoever possesses these three qualities will taste the halawa, the sweetness of iman. The first, أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا That Allah and His Messenger become more beloved to you than anyone else. Number two, أَنْ يُحِبُّ الْمَرْضِ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And you love an individual, you love your brother, you love your sister for the sake of Allah. And that is it. You love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you love them for the sake of Allah, that love will endure. When you love personally, then our personal love comes with conditions. Personal conditions that have nothing to do with deen. And then the Prophet said the third thing, he said, أَنْ يَقْرَهُ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَنْقَضَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كَمَا يَقْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ Is that you hate to return to kufr after Allah has guided you to Islam just as you would hate to be thrown into a fire. So I use that last part of the hadith for us if the Prophet said in order for us to taste the sweetness of Iman that we hate to return to kufr after Allah has guided us to Islam then likewise if you are going to taste the sweetness of your deeds the consistency of your deeds then you have to hate to return to the person that you were after you have put all of this work and this effort into building the new you number two is prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making Allah, making God your top priority. Making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the priority, not your job, not your spouse, not your children, not your friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the priority. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَهُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ He is the first, هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ لَيْسَ قَبْلَهُ شَيْءٍ He is the first, none comes before him. وَهُوَ الْآخِرُ لَيْسَ بَعْدَهُ شَيْءٍ He is the last, there is none that comes after him. وَهُوَ الْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ لَيْسَ دُونَهُ شَيْءٍ He is the most apparent, and he is also the hidden. But nothing comes before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is something that we have to manifest. We have to make that reality that nothing comes before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فِي بَيْتِهِ كَانَ فِي مِهْنَةِ أَهْلِهِ يعني فِي خِدْمَةِ أَهْلِهِ وَإِذَا حَضَرَتِ السَّرَاءِ يعني إِذَا سَمِعَ الْأَذَانِ فَكَأَنَّهُ لَا يَعْرِفُنَا وَلَا نَعْرِفُهُ Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in his home with his family. He used to be in the service of his family. What can I get you? What do you need? Not that I'm sitting back on the couch with my feet up, give me this, give me that, ushering, you know, giving orders to this one and to that one. But he used to be in the service of his family, helping out in the home. Aisha said, but when he heard the adhan go off, it was as if we didn't know who he was and, he didn't, and we didn't know who he was and he didn't know who we were. Allah became the priority. I'm helping my family, but when it's time to go, it's time to go. Time to go pray, it's time to go pray. For our children, you're playing your Xbox, you're playing your PlayStation, whatever you're engaged in. When you hear the other go off on your phone, stop what you're doing and give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the priority that he deserves. Allah said, no one. Laysa qabla hushayn. Nothing comes before him. Practice that in your life. You're doing it now in Ramadan. Why can't you do it after Ramadan is over? You're giving Allah priority over your desires. You're giving Allah priority over your food. You're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala priority over your drink. You're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala priority over your sexual desires. Why can you do it in Ramadan, but you can't do it outside of Ramadan? You've proven to yourself that you can do it. You've prioritized God. Which is why fasting, the reward for fasting is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a hadith of Qudsi, كُلُّ عَمَلُ مِنْ آدَمْ لَهُ إِلَّا السَّوْمُ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِبِ That all of the deeds of the child of Adam are for himself, except fasting. Fasting is for me, and I will reward him for his fast. Inna abdi yada'a ta'amahu wa sharabahu wa shahwatahu li ajli. My servant leave off his food, his drink, and his sexual desires for me. Because we prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah became the priority. And we have to maintain that consistency throughout our lives. Some of the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين when Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed the ayat يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقربوا الصلاة لا تقربوا الصلاة وأنتم سكارم حتى تعلموا ما تقولون Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed the ayat Oh you who believe do not come to the Salat while you are in a drunken, intoxicated state until you can understand everything that you say. And this was because one of the Sahaba, after having a dinner at the house of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, they were drinking. And he came to the masjid and led the Salat. And he started to recite Surah the Kafirun. And instead of saying, La a'budu ma ta'budun, he said, A'budu ma ta'budun. Nasi lam. He forgot the lamb. Changed the entire meaning because he was intoxicated, not understanding what he was saying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, Oh you who believe, do not come to the salat while you are in a drunken state until you can understand everything that you say. And so while some of the sahaba continued to drink, just not coming to the salat drunk, many of the sahaba said, La khayr fi shay'in fassala baynana wa bayna salat there is no good in anything that separates us from our prayer. No good in anything that busies us from our salat. And they left alcohol because of that. It wasn't even haram yet. 
but they prioritize their salah. I will not allow anything to interfere with my worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For our children, you're in high school, you're in middle school. Go to your teacher, go to your principal. I need a room, I need a place to go pray. Prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. School is just yet one component of your life. Don't pray in school because it's Ramadan. Pray in school and make it something that is acknowledged and recognized throughout the school system within Delaware and any other state. That should be a priority. We are the only Ummah that prays five times a day. Accommodations have to be made for us no matter where we go. No matter where we go, I have to pray. Do you have a place for me to make Salah? What are they going to tell you? No. They're going to bend over backwards to accommodate you. But if you don't say anything, they're not going to say anything. Many of our children are too busy trying to blend in. You have a fuddle, you have a virtue that Allah gave you that He didn't give to anybody else. Use that, wear that with confidence, wear it with pride. You have non Muslims talking about, oh, you guys think you're special. Absolutely, we're special. Do you pray five times a day? Absolutely not. Nothing special about you. We communicate with God five times a day at a bare minimum. Everything special about us. No other Muslim, no other religious group, organization in the world prays that many times a day. Right, we're special. It used to be 50. And out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, he made it five. Yes, we're special. You wear the hijab, or y'all think y'all cute, y'all think y'all special. Absolutely! Because I can't marry any of your men. I can only marry my men. So the only people that are privileged enough to see what is under my hijab is a man from the Muslim community who I marry. Your men are not privileged enough to see me. That's I'm special. But when you don't look at your religion like that, you're constantly trying to blend in and fit in with everybody else. You're not like everybody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya Nisa and Nabi, Lestunna ke ahad min al nisa O women of the Prophet, you are not like every other woman. You are different. Embrace that. Wear that with pride. Wear it with confidence. Stop hiding your deen from the world. Number three, from the ways to maintain consistency. And seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and assistance. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no power, no might, but no assistance except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave us the strength to worship Him during Ramadan. And He is the one that can give us the strength to continue worshiping Him after Ramadan. Steadfastness and istiqama is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to supplicate, Allahumma rahmataka arju, fala tikilni ila nafsi tarafa ta'ayn, wa aslih li shakmi kulla la ilaha ila ant. Oh Allah, your mercy is what I hope for, so do not leave me alone to myself, not even for the time that it takes to blink an eye. Don't leave me to myself, not even tarafa ta'ayn, not even for the time that it takes to blink an eye. And rectify all of my affairs. La ilaha illa ant. Nothing deserves worship except you. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. Fear being alone, left alone to your own vices. Yusuf alayhi salam, he acknowledged his own weakness in the face of Zulaikha and the women that were trying to seduce him. And he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his divine intervention in that moment. Yusuf alayhi salam, he said, قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ وَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِنِينَ He said, oh my Lord, prison is more dear to me than what these women are calling me to. And if you do not turn their plot against me away from me, I may be so inclined to them. I fear for myself. 
I'm afraid of me. That's what Yusuf is saying. Oh my Lord, I am afraid of me. If you don't intervene in this moment, my soul may incline towards them. And I will be from amongst them ignorant because I know better. I know better. And then, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard him and responded to him and turned the plot of these women away from him. You have to be afraid of yourself. Leaving Ramadan, coming out of Ramadan, after everything that you've done for yourself, you should be trembling. I'm afraid of me. Oh Allah, don't leave me to myself, not even for the time that it takes for me to blink my eyes. Number four, and we have one more after this, is constantly battling your desires. Mujahidat al nafs waging war, the battle for your soul. The soul naturally inclines towards what is evil. Except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon. Indeed, the soul inclines towards evil, naturally, except those souls whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had mercy upon. There's some souls who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just preserved them and protect them from naturally inclining towards evil. The Prophet sallallahu never committed zina, never drank, never engaged in shirk before Islam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu never committed zina, never drank, never committed shirk before Islam. There's some souls that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just protects them. But for the vast majority of us, we naturally incline towards evil. And in naturally inclining towards evil, that means that you have to be in a constant state of war, struggling to fight your soul. Because the moment you give up and give in, the moment your soul conquers you. You become no different than an animal. The thing that separates us from animals is that animals give in to their impulses. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the intellect to resist. To resist our impulses because they're detrimental, dangerous. Animals don't have that type of discernment. And we have inspired man to know the difference between right and wrong. But if your soul is constantly, your desires is constantly pulling you this way, then you have to use your intellect, you have to use your spirituality, you have to use your iman, your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pull it in the opposite direction. One of the scholars of the past, he said, <laughs> I waged war against my soul for 40 years so that I could relax for the next 40 years. That's how you get your raha. That's how you get your peace. But you gotta put in the work. You have to learn how to discipline your soul. And there is no greater place wherein we can discipline ourselves like in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُرُنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those who wage war in our cause, we will guide them to our paths, our many paths of goodness. And indeed Allah is with those who do good deeds. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala su'ila Imam Ahmed mata yajidu al-abd ta'am al-raha qala idha wubi'a qadamahu fil jannah Imam Ahmed was asked, when does the servant ever arrive at a place of safety and peace? He said the servant will never arrive at a place of safety and peace until he has put his foot in Jannah. Until then, it's constant war. The war never stops. Even down to the last moments of Imam Ahmed's life. He said, mumbling, mumbling under his breath, not until I'm dead. Not until I'm dead. His son Abdullah comes to him and says, what are you saying? Not until I'm dead. Are you losing it? And Imam Ahmed said, no, Shaytan came to me in this moment and said, yeah, Ahmed, cut in the joke. You, you, you escaped me. You made it. And Ahmed said to him, no, not until I'm dead. 
Because even in these last little moments before the angel of death come to collect my soul, you still have an opportunity to misguide me. You are not safe until your origin, your foot is in gender. That's when you can relax. Until then, it's a constant war for your soul. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullun yabdu, Every individual, Kullu insan, and every human being wakes up every morning, Ba'iun nafsa, as a merchant of his own soul, selling his soul. You're either going to sell it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're free, or you're going to sell it to Shaitan and he's going to further enslave you. But nobody wakes up neutral. It's a constant war for your soul. And if you understand that, then you understand that I have to continue even after Ramadan. And the last thing that you can do to maintain consistency after Ramadan is over is to keep yourself surrounded by those who are righteous. Stay surrounded around or by good people, people who are aspiring to be better Muslims. The Prophet وسلم, he said, that a man is on the practice of the religion of his close companion, his close friend. So let every one of you look closely at who you take as an intimate friend. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of the people that you spend your time with. You show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And as Musa alayhi salam in ending, he made a dua, a powerful dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah sent him to Fir'aun. Musa, he said, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li waziran min ahli Harun akhi ushtud bihi azri wa ashriq he said, oh my Lord, make me tolerant. I'm going up to this tyrant to go talk to this tyrant. I know he's going to say some things that are disrespectful. Open my chest, make me tolerant. Well, you silly Henry, and make my affair easy. No poet could have ever written anything more poetic than this. And remove the list from my tongue so that he can understand me clearly. Because the man who can articulate himself is a dangerous man. I want you to understand clearly what I'm saying. And make me a second in command. Don't send me by myself. Give me a second in command. A wazir from my family. Harun, Akhi, my brother Harun. The scholars say that when he made this dua, that made Musa a prophet. He made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his brother a prophet right along with him. Strengthen me with him. Don't make him a liability. Strengthen me. Some of us have people in our circles, they're liabilities to you. They cause you to compromise your being, compromise your integrity. Strengthen me with him. And make him a partner in my affair. Because the end goal in all of that, so that we can praise you together. And we can remember you together. That's the end goal. I need a companion. Someone that's going to remind me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in doing so, we create a fortress around our relationship where shaitan cannot penetrate. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness for our shortcomings. Rabbana inna zalimna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunnana min al-khasirin ya dal jalali wal ikram Rabbana inna zalimna anfusana وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ يَا ذَا الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصل اللهم على نبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول